Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's uh, Friday, very special Friday, last day of January, which means that uh, we got a short month of February and then March is we go into spring. So we're practically through this winter. And January was a rough one, huh? So is December. So looking forward to spring as I'm sure most of you are. Um, we got a couple things to get to, but first I wanna start with a retraction. Something I said that you pointed out uh, on that exit sign that we did on last video, uh, there were three leads in there, and one of them uh, was for 110, and the other one was for 277. Now, I just thought, like the power supplies, the universal power supplies that run between 100, and, uh, 100 volts and 240, that's so you could use them both here in the UK and everywhere else, well... Uh, it turns out that wasn't the case with the exit sign. It actually is meant to run off 277, which again, you pointed out, it's uh, commercial lighting and high vac or HVAC um, systems run on 277. I didn't know that. So that's very interesting. And uh, if you get one of those, uh, that's what that 277 lead is for, for commercial applications here in the States anyway. I don't know what it is overseas, but... Thanks very much for pointing that out. I never knew that. And that's why I learn more from you than you do from me. So with that, uh, let's get started right away. Okay, for today's project, my good buddy, Scott Durga. You know, Scott from the telephone and everything. Scott sent me this valve. This is a uh, terrific valve. You can see here, it's a Jenkins. Okay, a Jenkins. And this, is, this thing's huge and heavy. And... Uh, as one of our subscribers pointed out, the reason this uh, valve is designed this way with this coupling here is so, so that when you're installing it, if it's close to a wall, you could spin the valve and tighten it on. You know, otherwise, if this thing was one piece and didn't have this coupling, you couldn't uh, turn it around. It would hit the wall. So that's very interesting. Don't know how these work. I see there's some kind of gate in here. Looks like there's some kind of grease. It's very stiff to turn. I can turn it, but it's very stiff. What do you say? We take it apart, see what we can do, make a cutaway if possible. Okay, here is the valve completely disassembled. And I have to tell you, this is just a work of art. It is absolutely, the design of this is spectacular. You can see there's a couple rails in here. I don't know if you can see this. See the rails, one on this side, one on that side. And this is the gate that runs, there's cutouts there for the rails. So that, that's what opens and closes it. There's a ton of gunk and grease. I don't know what, I guess grease. Now, how this attaches to the shaft, it just slides in here like this. That's all it does, it just slides in. It don't need to lock in because it's held in there. This goes in through here that, and that's how it operates by turning that just a beautiful design uh it's absolutely filthy now i just got to figure out how i'm going to cut this to make it so you could see everything work but it's got to be kept together you know that's the key so it don't fall apart uh the first thing we're gonna have to do is de i hate this is really messy it's gonna take a while to get all this grease out of there so let's work on that Okay, here's where we're at. You know, uh, I got about 45 minutes just to get enough grease off that I could handle it without getting all greasy. Um, this is it. Uh, what do we have here? Two, four, six, seven parts to this magnificent, absolutely magnificent valve. Um, now, I'm trying to figure out how I want to cut it because you want to see how the thing works all the way up. And like I said, it has to remain that if you, it's not going to fall apart on you. So I'm, I'm looking at that, trying to figure out how I'm going to do it. And uh, some of the, the machining is absolutely spectacular on these parts, you know. This here is the wedge type gate valve that comes down on those rails, you know. And you can see here when I drop this in, how it, it's self-sealing more or less because of that wedge. Isn't that cool? So... 
we have that we have to cut this here so i always try and you know you screw it on see where it sets and then you cut it that way so let's get to uh to cutting just beautiful and then after i cut it then i'll clean it up on the wire brush because no sense in cleaning everything a lot of this will get gunked up into your wire brush so let's do that Okay, there we go. There's the cutaway. Now you can see it's a little bit rough, but this is where the flap sander takes this down and gets it nice. But you can see here, there's the, uh, I had to finish it off with the hacksaw because I couldn't get my four and a half inch all the way through these parts. Okay, that looks good. Now we got to cut the other parts and put it in and clean this up on the wire brush and we're coming along. Okay, you can see where we're at now. We have the nut, you know, that nut we cut down the side. This here will move up and down when we get the threaded rod in there. But you can see the threads in here will clean everything. You can see the packing material up here. That's what a cutaway does. It really sells a product, doesn't it? But it's looking good so far. Now, and we'll finish up with a flight sanding on it. I'm going to go have some lunch. I've been down here for a few hours working on this. Let's go have some lunch and we'll be back. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what Scott's valve looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. What do you think about this, huh? This really came out for one of the best I've ever done. Look at this. Uh, repainted the top here in that, that beautiful green that they had. And check out the inside here. Look at how beautiful this came out. The valve, all the perfectly cut away, all the way through. And watch how nicely this works as you twist it down. You can see everything working as you see that wedge working its way down to that pocket where it eventually locks up here. And there we go. You can see the lock up. Isn't that just fabulous? How could you not? What kind of maniac doesn't love a good cutaway, huh? And, uh... I got to tell you, this one is without a doubt one of the nicest valves I've ever seen. Special thanks to Scott Derger for picking this one out and sending it over. Just look at that. Isn't that absolutely spectacular? What do you think about this? Okay, next up, I've always wanted to pick up one of these DC power supplies that went on sale on Amazon. I finally bought it and uh, this one here, it's a small power supply. It goes up to 30 volts DC and 30 uh, 10 amps. Okay, so uh, let's check it out and see what you can use something like this for in your shop. Okay, so here we go. Uh, unboxed. And now I've always wanted one of these for a long time. And, and there's so many different companies that make this type. They're probably all made in similar factories overseas. Um, some of them go 5 amps, some will go 10 amps. This one uh, is a 10 amp. And again, 30 volts it goes up to. DC current. And it's good for checking all types of things that I do in the shop and whatnot. Um, it has a coarse and a fine adjustment. I'll show you how that works in a minute. It also has a um, uh, power switch in the front here, which some of them don't. We'll turn the power on. And you can see here we have our display. Let's say we wanted 6 volts. We're checking something that we need 6 volts, which I'm going to show you in a minute. We bring the coarse as close as we can up to 6 volts. Okay. There we go, 595. Then we take the fine and we bring that up right to six volts exactly. And there we go. And let's check that out with our meter and see how close this is. Okay, here we go. You can see it's exactly the right uh, current and we'll move it up a little bit, see what happens. Here we go, we'll bring it up to 9.22. You see 9.22. So this is extremely accurate power supply and uh, 
you could check a lot of different things. Let's try out what I bought it for, for trying different kind of objects I have in the shop. I do a lot of experimenting in the shop and I always needed some low voltage DC. This goes, to, if I want to check out something that's 12 volt or whatever, I can use this. Um, this is a perfect example of what I'm gonna use it for. You remember these bulbs I got last week from Carrie over at Ozark Bonsai. Carrie sent these great bulbs in and uh, I want to check them out. So what these are, these are vintage automobile uh, bulbs that run off a six volt DC. You can see this one here is a headlight bulb, a GE Mazda. And this is a, a bayonet base, okay? And it's called a BA-15, 15 millimeters across a BA is bayonet. And it's followed by a letter, and this one would be a S. BA-15S because it's a single contact. See that single contact there? Now, if you notice, the lugs on the side of the bayonet are both at the same height from the base of the bulb. And that is because for your socket, this is a BA-15S socket. You see the, the little registers on the side that the, the bayonet lugs will go in are at the same height. So when you, and there's the center contact. So when you want to put this in, it doesn't matter which way you put it in. You just push this like this and you give it a little turn to the right and it locks in. And that's how you uh, put these bulbs in for a BA-15S. That varies a little different for the BA-15D. D stands for dual. There's dual filaments here, double filaments in the back. And the reason that is, is that there's two filaments here and one is for brake or signal, turn signal. And if you notice the bayonet lugs on the side are at different heights, that's important so that when you put it into the BA-15D socket that they register correctly. Now to put this into the BA-15D socket, you wanna take the lug that goes lower and that goes to the lower one here. So you would push this in like this and then you give it a turn and now those two will align and you'll get your proper connection. So let's plug this in and see how this works. Again, this is ground. This is for your brake and this is for your driving light or vice versa. Okay, now we have the power supply you can set up. Uh, you can see it's set up for six volts DC. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our positive uh, clip here and put it onto the center lead, which is the positive. It doesn't matter. It'll work either way, but we're going to put the positive here and then we're going to touch the ground or to the negative here onto the casing. And you can see we have illumination of the bulb. Okay. Very bright, nice bulb. You can see here six volts and it's uh, drawing 3.6 amps. Okay. About a little over three and a half amps and it's 20, almost 22 watts is what this bulb is drawing. And you can see it uh, works very well. Let's try the other one. Here is our dual filament, BA-15D. And uh, remember we said this one's the uh, park, this is the running lights, and this is the brake or turn signal. So we're gonna hook up, we have this hooked up to the ground. We'll hook this up to the scent, to this one here. And you can see that's lit up. You see that bulb lit up here? That's for your regular running lights, your regular tail lights, if you put your lights on. Not bright, but it's just an indicator. Now, I'm going to touch this to the same contact, and you can see that they both light up. That would be the brake or the signal. Do you see? And let's look at the difference in what it draws. You can see here it's only drawing a half an amp or three and a half watts when it's on regular running. And then when we touch it to the turn signal or the brakes, that goes up to 3.2 amps and 19 watts. So you see the difference there. And that's what's so great about having one of these power supplies. You can see exactly what something's drawing, what it's using, and you can also set it up uh, differently. There's a lot of things you could do with it, but that's what the basics are. What do you think about this little guy? Okay, so in closing, uh, special thanks to Scott Durger again for that awesome valve. Didn't that come out just wonderful? Isn't that such a beautiful Jenkins, man? They made some great stuff. And uh, what do you think about that little power supply? That's pretty cool, huh? Hope you enjoyed today's episode as, as much as I did. Have a great weekend. We will see you again on Monday with a brand new project that's going to be a multi-episode project. Hope you can tune in. Take care now. Bye-bye.